Okay, so here we are going to uh, go over the quiz 7 about sampling distribution. So I'm going to go over 7 questions uh, and actually all of them are similar. Basically we know that in the end we are going to approximate the sample average to a normal distribution using the central limit theorem. So in the end we are going to use the normal distribution and then we are going to standardize the normal distribution and use Excel to find a probability. And to do that, we have to find the normal distribution, the, the, the mean and the variance, the parameters for the normal distribution. And we are going to use some, uh, a couple of formulas for that. So this basic structure is the same for all the questions. So basically what you're going to do is just repeat the same, uh, like, you know, procedures but it's super important, that's why I have you repeat uh, that exercise, okay? Okay, let's start with uh, this question. The amount of time it takes to complete an assignment is negatively skewed distribution with a mean of 20 minutes and a standard deviation of 15 minutes, right? Here, so I gave you mean and standard deviation of uh, one single, like, uh, one single observation. Negatively skewed is actually not important. It is, uh, it is not useful in our uh, solution. So let's think about then. So this is for one student. And then we think about 100 students. If 100 students are randomly sampled, what is the mean and the standard deviation of their average time to complete the assignment, right? So well, oh, like from a single uh, observation, we are going to connect it to the uh, the sample average out of 100 observations. Uh, you know, like say, we are going to denote a single student's time to finish an assignment as x and its sample average of 100 students as x bar. So we, if you see bar, on top of a random variable, usually that stands for sample average of that random variable, okay? So I will, I'm going to maintain this notation throughout this quiz, okay? And what we know is the mean and the variance is for single observation x. Expectation of x is 20, standard deviation is 15. And also we know that the formulas for the sample average mean and standard deviation. The, the mean, the expectation of the sample average equals the expectation of a single outcome. So it's simple, it's 20. And the standard deviation of the sample average equals the standard deviation of a single outcome divided by square root of sample size. In this case, sample size is 100 because we take average from 100 observations, right? So uh, this n is coming from this sample average, okay? Uh, so then plug in the numbers. The mean is 20 and single outcome standard deviation is 15, but you have to divide it by square root of 100, which is simply divide by 10. So it becomes 1.5. This is how you calculate the mean and the standard deviation of a sample average, okay? So we are going to use this method like all the time throughout this quiz. Next question. Uh, here, the probability distribution of job satisfaction scores for senior executives are as follows, right? If you survey 100 senior se executives, what is the probability that the average job satisfaction score is lower than 3.8? So uh, first, we have a distribution and this distribution is for one observation. So if you randomly choose one senior executive, this is the probability distribution for her or his uh, job satisfaction score, okay? But if we are handling 100 executives and their average, okay? The average job satisfaction score out of 100 executives is what we are <clears throat> uh, interested in, okay? And then 
In sum, we are going to follow these steps. First, we will calculate the mean and the standard deviation for a single executive. First step. And second step, we are going to transform this single observation's mean and standard deviation into a sample average's mean and standard deviation. You know, we, using the formula we used earlier. Okay, and then using them as parameters for normal distribution, we are going to standardize x bar, the, the distribution of uh, sample average to a standard normal distribution. And then finally, use calculator to find standard normal distribution probability. Okay, these basic steps are uh, common to all questions, uh, on all the following questions. Okay. Let's see. Let's do the first type, first uh, step. So it's been a while since you uh, did this practice. We have to calculate expectation from probability distribution table. So remember, we need to make a table with outcomes and probabilities and multiply them to obtain probability weighted outcomes. Right? Outcome times probability and outcome times probability, you have five uh, probability weighted outcomes because there are five possible outcomes. And then their summation is the mean, right? If you add these five weighted outcomes, you will get uh, the mean, that is four. So average job satisfaction score uh, is four. The mean is four. And then still you need to calculate the standard deviation, which is basically uh, variance, square root of the variance. Okay. So from the outcome, I make another column for deviation. So you subtract four, the mean. So one minus four, two minus four, three minus four, four minus four, five minus four. So you get deviations and then square them. Then you get these num positive numbers and then you multiply. So after this transformation from the original outcome into square deviations, you multiply the probability. So nine times zero, four times 0 0.1, one times 0 0.2, zero times 0 0.3, one times 0.4. So in the end, you get probability weighted squared deviations. They are like these and you add them again sum them, you are going to get a variance of 1. And that means, because variance is 1, its square root is automatically 1. Standard deviation is also 1. Okay, so we just calculated the mean and the variance, or mean and the standard deviation for a single observation, right? Remember, it, this distribution is for single observation. Now you transform them into sample average version. Sample average, uh, the mean is the same. The standard deviation must be adjusted by uh, 1 over square root n, and it's easy. So mean is still 4, but the standard deviation becomes 0.1 because it is divided by 10. Okay. And uh, number 3, well, we are going to use those, those two parameters, 4 and 0.1, to standardize x bar. Right, uh, uh, to standard like so, we are looking for probability that the average is lower than 3.8. So average x bar is smaller than 3.8. This is the probability we are calculating. So let's standardize. Subtract mean and divide by 0.1, uh, the standard deviation. Uh, right. So then if you calculate that, you are going to get minus two. So oh, this probability, the probability about the sample average can be represented, expressed as a probability about standard normal distribution. And then finally, uh, you are going to use Excel. Remember when you use Excel, you have to transform all the probabilities into a cumulative probability because uh, <clears throat> It only gives you cumulative probability. Now, this is not a big problem. Uh, what you are calculating is strictly smaller than minus two. 
but uh, cumulative probability take this form but there is no difference let me show you so norm dot s dot d i s t standard normal distribution put minus two and uh, true and the second option is about cumulative probability you have to say yes then it is uh, 0 0.02275 in terms in in percentage it is 2.275 percent so that is the answer right so it was a little bit long but basically we are doing these four steps and the following the, the last two steps are from chapter 6 so these two steps are from chapter 6 and what's new is these like and the first step is basically from chapter 3 and 4 so what is new is the second step only the second step is additional uh, step in this chapter like this we are going to like extend these steps to study uh, more applications in the following chapters so you have to uh, you need to do this exercise now so that later you can do more steps based on these, these uh, uh, procedures okay uh, okay the next question the amount of time an investment banker devotes to his or her job per week is normally distributed with a mean of 70 hours and a standard deviation of six hours so investment banker works a lot uh, and find the probability that the mean amount of work per week for nine randomly selected investment bankers is more than 72 hours uh, by the way this is a sampling distribution because you are taking average mean mean amount of work per week for nine bankers so you are ever taking average over over nine bankers but uh, the problem is nine is not a large number so uh, uh, central limit theorem is the approximation will be very very uh, inaccurate with nine observations nine sample size but fortunately we have this additional information normal distribution if the original underlying distribution is normal then without central limit theorem already the average will be normal distribution so we can uh, we can we have the same result uh, the, our sample average is normally distributed because the distribution for a single outcome is also normal right so understand now I'm not using central limit theorem but uh, normal distribution assumption here still we are doing the same thing we are going through uh, these four steps as before uh, I will so from here the mean is 70 hours and standard division six hours this is when you choose a single banker randomly choose one banker then the distribution will be 70 and 66 a standard division six so we have these and uh, for the sample average with nine bankers the sample average will become uh, the the expectation of the sample average will be the same but the standard deviation of the sample average will be uh, divided by square root of n here square root of 9 is 3 so uh, the standard deviation of the sample average will be 2 and using 70 and 2 as parameters for normal distribution you can standardize <coughs> this probability what is the probability more than 72 hours what is the probability that the average amount of work per week is more than 72 hours like this standardize by subtracting the mean divide by the standard deviation you get you get one okay so this is the standardization step finally in the final step you need to convert this probability to a cumulative probability so this is not a cumulative probability uh, so what, you need, what we need to do is from Excel we are going to find probability smaller than 1 
but what we want is probability greater than 1, so you take 1 minus probability smaller than 1. Okay, let's see. You can simply change this number to 1. Okay, norm.s.dist, then you get this, and what I'm going to do is I will take 1 minus that probability, then you will get 15.866%. Uh, so the answer is 15.866%. Okay, so again, it's simple, uh, not that difficult, there is no uh, difficult steps, but you have to be careful, uh, follow step by step. Okay. Similar question, a bottling company uses a machine to fill bottles with olive oil. Uh, the bottles are designed to contain 475 millimeter, milliliters. In fact, the contents vary according to our normal distribution with a mean of 478 milliliters and a standard deviation of 3 milliliters. So, it, this company makes, manufactures olive oils but it has to contain uh, 475 milliliters, but it gave a little, it gives a little more than that uh, to, 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 like as a margin of error, right? Margin for error. So, nine bottles are randomly chosen and the total amount of the olive oil in the nine bottles is measured, which is supposed to be uh, 4,275 milliliters if there is no error. What is the probability that the total amount of olive oil is less than that? Okay, uh, first, same problem, we are only choosing 9 bottles, which is a small sample size, but does not matter because we already have normal distribution assumption here, so that is not a problem. Another problem here is, um, we are measuring the total amount not the average per bottle. We are, you know, pour nine bottles into one large, you know, bowl and measure the amount total, uh, right? But not a problem because, so we are going to denote Y as the total, total amount in nine bottles, total amount of olive oils in nine bottles, but we, it is easy to transform the total amount into average. If you divide the total amount by 9, then you are going to get uh, amount per bottle, right? That is x bar. So, probability of y smaller than uh, this amount is basically means, so if the total amount is less than that, that means the average amount is less than this much, which is the uh, like, you know, label amount, 475 milliliters. Okay, so then we set up our target. We are looking for this probability, and as we wanted, it is a probability about the sample average. So we can use the central limit theorem and the, all the information, all the knowledge we learned in this chapter. Okay, so then it's going back to the same steps. First, single bottle has a mean of 478 and standard deviation 3. Then the average of 9 bottles, average amount in 9 bottles, it has the same mean, but the standard deviation is 1, because divided by square root of 9. So then using these mean and standard deviation, we are going to standardize x bar sample average to a standard normal distribution, like like x bar smaller than 475 is standardized to 475 minus mean over uh, standard deviation, which is minus 3, and then use Excel to find that. So change this part to minus 3. The answer is 0.135%. So this is already a cumulative probability, so uh, it is 0.135% only. That is the answer here, okay? Next question. Suppose that the mean and the standard deviation of annual returns of 
financial assets are 10%, mean is 10%, and standard deviation is 9%. Uh, <clears throat> assume that the financial assets are statistically independent of each other. If you invest on 100 assets, what is the probability that the average annual return is lower than 7%? Now you see the same structure here. We have the mean and standard deviation for a single asset, right? Uh, and But we are interested in average of 100 assets. Uh, and we are looking for probability smaller than 7. How do we do that? Same steps. Okay, for a single asset, the mean is 10, standard deviation is 9. And um, for the sample average of 100 assets, the mean is the same. Standard deviation is smaller, should be smaller, divide by square root of 100. So the standard deviation is 0.9. And use these numbers to standardize x bar into a normal standard normal distribution. So probability x bar, the sample average return is smaller than 7% equals probability z, standard normal distribution, smaller than 7 minus mean over standard deviation. And if you calculate that, it is minus 3.33. Like, let's see if that is right. So it is 7 minus 10 over 0.9. Right, it is correct. So minus 3.33 forever. And find this from Excel. Um, what, I'm, what I can do is I can just use this, refer to this cell in the inside the formula. Then it returns probability like this, 0.043%. So, it's a really small probability when you diversify your investment. But technically, statistically, oh, all the same questions. Here is another similar but a little different question. In the last election, a state representative uh, received 20% of the votes, votes cast. Uh, one year after the election, the representative organized a survey that asked a random sample of 100 people whether they would vote for him in the next election. If we assume that his popularity is not, has not changed, what is the probability that less than 15% of sample would vote for him? Right? So, so here, we are assuming that his popularity has not changed. That means still 20% of voters would support him, would vote for him, right? But when you survey 100 people, when you survey 100 people, you may be very lucky to meet all the supporters in your survey, or you may happen to meet a lot of people who don't like him, right? For example, the randomness is coming from the sampling of 100 people, and Okay, then let's set it, set this, set this, uh, uh, translate this question into our uh, setup. First, you have to observe that this is a binary distribution. So I will define a single survey respondent or a voter's answer as zero or one, one or zero, and I will use one if the voter would like to vote for the representative again supports the representative, and zero if not. So success is if the voter is a supporter and failure if not, okay? And because it is a binary distribution, so here, the probability we are interested in is the probability that less than 15% of the sample would vote for him, right? So. It is a probability percentage of survey respondents would vote for him is less than 15%. This is probability, but it can be interpreted as it equals a sample average because that is a property of a binary distribution. Remember, in a binary distribution, I said the average doesn't mean anything, doesn't mean anything. 
So uh, instead of interpreting average uh, as an average, I recommend it to interpret that as a percentage of success, right? That means like now we are interested in the percentage of success, but we may use the technique for sample average, right? In this chapter, we learned how to approximate sample average to a normal distribution, but we may use the same technique for a percentage of success if the underlying distribution is binary, right? Because that's that's the main uh, like a, a desirable property of a binary distribution. It's pretty nice. And again, we are going to use the binary distribution's properties to calculate the mean and the variance. Remember, the mean, as I said, is the probability of success, which is 20%. So, so if you randomly choose one person, one voter, 20% uh, last year, because the popularity has not changed, 20% uh, of voters would uh, support him, would vote for him. So the mean is 20%. The variance is the probability of success times probability of failure, right? Using the using the <clears throat> binary distributions properties. So the variance is 0.16, which is a simple number because if you take square root of that, you 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 get 0.4 here. And then uh, if you think about average of 100 voters, uh, the mean is the same. But the standard deviation takes this form. So the variance for a single outcome uh, takes square root of that because we are handling standard deviation. Also divide by the square root of uh, the sample size. So calculate that and you are going to get 0.04. Uh, by the way, if you want to calculate square root, you can use SQRT formula. For example, SQRT of one uh, uh, zero point one six is point four. So this is how you calculate square root on Excel. Okay. So anyhow, standard deviation is simply point zero four. Then using the mean and the standard deviation, you can standardize. So the probability that even less than fifteen percent would vote for him. That means the sample average is less than 0.15. Standardize to uh, standard normal distribution less than minus 1.25. I'll plug, plug that number in here, minus 1.25. You are going to get 10%, right? So due to the sampling, randomness in the sampling, uh, you may have a big uh, error in the result, survey result. Okay. Uh, same thing. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay, maybe the last question. Uh, the default rate on government guaranteed student loans at a certain public four-year institution is 7% and 1,000 student loans are made at that institution. If we assume that uh, the defaults are statistically independent across loans. The number of total defaults at the institution is a binomial random variable. Okay. However, we will approximate the binomial distribution uh, by the standard normal distribution using the central limit theorem. Calculate the probability of 50 or uh, 50 or fewer defaults using uh, the uh, probability of 50 or fewer defaults using the central limit theorem. Okay, again, we are handling a binary distribution. So I will define X in this way. So if a student loan is in default, I will count that as success. Okay, that is one. And if not, if not in default, zero. And furthermore, I will define Y as the number of uh, defaults among the outstanding loans. Okay, so exactly this is bino binomial distribution. One loan is a binary experiment, whether it defaults or not, right? One loan is one uh, experiment, and 
we are counting the defaults out of 1000 so y must be a binomial distribution with n 1000 and p 7% right default rate is the probability of success okay but we are going to use the sample average because we are going to use central limit theorem to approximate to a normal distribution we are going to use x bar which is the sum total number of defaults over 1000 so out of 1000 loans if like say 100 uh, were in default then 10 percent is the probability of percentage of success which is the sample average okay so divide by uh, n so we are using all the binary distributions properties and we are looking for probability that number of defaults is less than uh, fewer than 50 right but we are going to transform number of defaults to the sample average using this this relationship so if you divide by n on both sides you are going to get sample average and we know how to approximate this guy right so as i said this is the sample average but we are going to interpret this as the default rate it is percentage interpret this as the percentage of success then we are looking for the probability that default rate among 1000 student loans is less than five percent okay and then it is easy to calculate this x bar is a sample average so what you need to do is you repeat the four steps we did earlier right first calculate the mean and the variance for a single outcome and in this case it is easy because it is binary distribution so you can use the formulas for the binary distribution and mean is simple but the variance is oh dirty number uh, but Excel will calculate that for us and if you randomly sample 1000 then the mean is the same but the standard deviation is much more complicated so let's see so what we have is our say binary let, let me put this here, binary variance the variance from the binary distribution is calculated like this 7% times uh, 1 minus 7% Okay, so then you get this number. This is the variance calculated from the binary distribution. So then sample averages variance is this guy divided by 1000. And sampling standard deviation is square root of this guy. So numbers are pretty dirty. But I will just take it. Uh, it you, you can simply approximate to 0 0.008, right? So the sampling standard deviation is calculated, and I will approximate it to 0 0.008. And then, <coughs> probability that default rate is less than 5% can be standardized using the mean and the standard deviation and in the end you only get so and then using this what you have is standardized 0.05 by subtracting the mean and dividing by this number this is the standardized oh, maybe I'm sorry I did some mistake uh, um, yep so it was my mistake so here two point so you get another number and i'm going to plug that into standard normal distribution formula then you are going to get 0.65 percent it's less than one percent okay so minus two point four seven percent i'm sorry about that but not a problem anyhow you are going to use the calculator or on uh, excel to calculate these numbers so you will get a uh, final probability like this okay this chapter is a preliminary chapter for 
uh, the following chapters like estimation, hypothesis testing, linear regression. These are main statistical methods you are going to use in other courses. So we needed uh, exercise and we did a lot. I hope uh, it helps. Okay, um, have a nice uh, midterm period and see you later. Bye.